Good morning, good evening, or good night, wherever you are in the world. We're on the same time with God. I thank God who is the head of my life, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, who are on one in their functions in my life, and as well as yours. I give you greetings from my TV um, ministry called Plain Sight Ministries, where we tell the truth. It's not about sight, it's about faith, but once you work by faith, everything is in plain sight. So I want to give you the message of God and what he did in my life, testimony-wise and scripture-wise. I give you uh, also greetings from the church that I'm at. Um, Elder Jeanette Sanders. It's called Greater United Faith Apostolic Church. And uh, my cousin Carol Williams, who is running the cameras. Today I kind of want to talk to you before anything. First off, let me pray. In the name of Jesus, I come to you right now, Lord Jesus, with a humble heart, letting you know how ha happy I am, Lord Jesus, that you saved my life. And I ask you to do the same for me as you did um, for Moses and everybody, Lord Jesus, that thought they had a speech impediment or whatever they had, I ask you to take away the nervousness and the fear, Lord Jesus, anxiety, and the things that even the doctors have said on our nation, Lord Jesus, mental health, or anything like, Lord, that I've been through, being shot or anything, Lord, I ask you to come against the wiles of Satan even right now, that everything be crystal clear in your sight. In the name of Jesus, amen. Today, I would like to talk to you guys about, first off, my testimony. I'm coming from the city of Compton, California, and um, out here there's a lot of situations that are on the news and some that are not. Normally they put the bad things on the news that really don't really even happen here. So that's a nugget right there. Sometimes you can't believe what you're seeing, and most of the times you got to go upon faith because God will put your eyes in the right direction. You may be looking at a scene or some, and thinking that that is it, but that is not it. Sometimes you have to look at God to see what it is. Um, you could be at a moment or a time in your life where you should not be there, uh, whether it's at a block or a party or with somebody, and God will show you in so many ways, vibrational-wise, sometimes he don't even talk, but you feel his touch. And today I want to talk to you basically upon the lines of my message is love me, I'm your enemy. Love me, I'm your enemy. I want to um, take y'all with me to Luke. Uh, Luke 34 it says and if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive what thank have ye for sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again in Psalms I mean uh, in St. Luke 35 but love ye your enemies and do good and lend hoping for nothing again and your reward shall be great and ye shall be the children of the, of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. I want to go even before that. It says, um, Luke 32, For if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. When it says, what thank, it, what thank is ye, have ye? They're basically talking about what benefit is it to just love those that love you. Sometimes you have to have love and compassion for others that treat you wrong. And when you do that, it's a breaking point because sometimes the elements of life will be anger, but that anger does not stem from people. When we notice that we have control over the anger, God said be angry but sin not. The sin comes because of a behavior pattern that maybe it was a habit or addiction from the past. For me, it was because that was my first resort. That was my reaction. And what God is doing is he's taking me upon not being in the reaction point of a kiddish stage of when I was younger. I would fight because I had felt like my points was not being you know, thought about or somebody did not think about me or have compassion on me. But sometimes we got to take ourselves out of the equation. For God said, love thy enemies. When you love your enemies, you don't talk about them. When you love your enemies, you don't pray against them regardless of what they do to you. What I realize is that the Holy Spirit 
The Holy Ghost does not move upon my prayer of praying against those that did me wrong or to, for me to despise them. He says, love them. Even when Jesus went to the cross, he did not bash his enemies. He did not come against them. He said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Because if they knew what they did to you, they would not have done it. So what God is telling me in this day and time, an all time word is, love me, I am your enemy. He's saying for me to love those that don't love me. When I do that, I understand that I can love myself because sometimes I'm my worst enemy. Sometimes I don't love myself. Most of the times I don't even know what love is until I look to God. And when I look to Jesus Christ, I know what love is. But sometimes to love me, I have to love those that don't love me because they're a replication of what's happening in my life to myself. So I thank God, I thank God, who is the head of my life. Um, you know, so many people, so many people out in the streets want to fight. The first thing they see people in, they want to fight them. You know, whether they look at them wrong or right, or say a good word, a gesture, like, hallelujah, God, God bless you. They want to fight them. And we as people, especially in Compton, we need to stay, stay away from that. That's a stigma that's put on us. And even in mental health, my testimony is being in mental health. God broke me out of the chains of the wiles of Satan when I found out that this whole world is a mental institution. God is, God is uh, uh, helping us. And we were enemies to God before the cross, even when we didn't do some. Sometimes it's not even our fault. And those that don't like us treat us as enemies, but we have to recognize that we're in this to win this. And sometimes winners get persecuted. Sometimes winners cannot shoot the right basket at the right time, but they're persevering. And misery love company, so you do not want to get to the level where your struggle is seen as it's the best. I hear people, they tell their testimony of experience, and they'll go upon telling their testimony and enhancing the devil and not saying God's name in it. Or they'll enlighten it, the bad parts and the good parts, they give like two seconds. Well, we can't be too much into the past that we don't see our future. So what God is telling me is to love those that don't love me because sometimes my worst enemy is the one in the mirror. I usually say to people, and I could be wrong, but I say, if I want to see the devil, I don't try to look for something I can't see. I, I say I look at my old pictures when I was high. I look at my old pictures when I was drunk. I look at my old pictures because that wasn't me. That was the enemy or, or his entities, imps or whatever, using me, and 11 years sped up. But at the moment that I realized that God wasn't my enemy, is the moment I realized everything else that was telling me he was my enemy was my enemy, whether it be family, friends, or, or, or others. And um, so I want to leave y'all with this song. I want to leave y'all with this song. It's called Sacrifice, because sometimes you got to sacrifice yourself, meals, or whatever, to show the replication of where you, where you are in your faith. Because faith without works is dead. No matter if you have faith and you don't work on it, you will not see the benefit without using the whole law. Faith without works is that you have to work out your salvation. God said he who endures, endures the biggest thing to the end shall be saved. So for me to say one day I smoke weed and I die and I do something wrong and I was saved, I did not live in what was benefited. I lived in what was taking me out. Therefore, I was working for another master, though I said I was saved. So it's like words are, words are when words become action, you can work in them. But when words are not actions, you have no foundation. So you're building a house on, on stony ground that don't have no foundation. But my words are built on God. I say this. Why are people driving the street life when they have a freeway? And Jesus says the freeway. And I say, um, you say you want everything. All the fame, all the praise, all the blink. But you need to realize a nightmare is still considered a dream. While time flying used to try to find wings. Stop looking back. You can find them on your knees. Spiritually in God, you can see. Beyond time and eternity. Don't let life just pass you by. Because death follows right behind. And try to take you out so he enters in. So when your name said, they got to mention him. Such a cruel way to get heard. They said you was nothing. You became that word. Now your fans, they cry at your show. And your autograph is on your headstone. The truth self set you free. So here's the truth, it's gonna cost you a fee to stay rooted and grounded in freedom. You gotta sacrifice your life to gain some. 
God said you more than the conquer work, but you got to learn how to conquer earth. To get what you want, you got to give up everything you want and serve Jesus. Thank you. Y'all be blessed on Plain Sight Ministries. Isaiah Sanders, a.k.a. Only Quest number three. God bless you till next time. And remember, God sees your future and God sees your tomorrow. And it looks bright. God bless you.